cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Sugar Pops. Today, Kellogg's Sugar Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it, brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Stone Valley Sheep War. A package of Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops sure come in handy when you're sitting around listening to the radio or watching TV, or most any other time for that matter. Yes, sir, whenever you've a hankering for a sweet treat, that's the time to reach for your box of Sugar Corn Pops and pop a few of those ready sweet nuggets of corn into your mouth. They're swell for breakfast, too, with milk or cream. And you never need sugar, because the sweetening's already on them. They're shot with sugar. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. The tempers of the western pioneers were sometimes short And deadly feuds often flared up United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles Were called on many times to act as peacemakers But they found their very lives in danger The time they stepped into the middle of The Stone Valley Sheep War Jingles, you better get your nose out of that book. I've settled Buckshot and Joker both. Now it's time we hit the trail. Huh? Oh, uh, Bill, I just want to finish this chapter. It's real exciting. What are you reading, anyhow? Well, it's a novel about the Wild West that I bought from a dime down at Bixby's General Store. What's it called? Fearless Freddy Rides a Trail, or Gunsmoke in Gravel Gulch. And who is Fearless Freddy? Fearless Freddy is a gun-toting cowpoke who stops at nothing in his relentless battle against the evil doers of the wide western plains. That's what it says in the book. Well, if we run across Fearless Freddy, I'll swear him in as a deputy marshal. You know, we could use a man like that. Now, climb into that saddle and let's get to work. Climb into the saddle. <laughs> Fearless Freddy doesn't climb into the saddle. Listen to this. With a single mighty bound, Fearless Freddy sprang to the back of his trusty pinto, and digging in his spurs, went dashing over the badlands on the trail of Black Bart, the notorious horse thief. Then his trusty pinto stumbled in a prairie dog hole and threw him right over his head. You forget about Fearless Freddy and let's go, Jingles. Okay, okay. Hey, move Joker out from the hitching rail, will you? All right. Move over there, Joker. <sighs> What do you got in mind now, Jingles? I'm going to spring into the saddle with one mighty bound. Jingles, you're loco now. Cut it out. Here I go. (laughs) Joker, stop pitching. I haven't got my feet in the stirrups, and here I go. No, Joker. Ow. Now, Joker, what would you pitch me off? If somebody dumped 300 pounds on your back with a mighty bound, you'd start sun fishing too, partner. Now hit the saddle right and let's get moving. All right, all right. Now come on over here, Joker. Come on. I apologize. I said I was sorry. Now hold still. That's better. Get around there, Buckshot. Now go on. Get going, Joker. I won't try any more sachets. Wonder how often Fearless Freddy gets tossed off in his trusty fiddle. About once a day, I'd say, if he rides like that all the time. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if this gun toting cowpoke has got very good sense, Bill. Where are we going today? Over into Stone Valley. Trouble over there between the common and the sheep herders. They feuding again? Seems like we have to settle that war about every few months. It's never really settled. The cow men say the sheep ruin the range for the cattle, and the sheep men say they've got as much right there as anybody. Eh, somebody ought to knock their heads together and make them share the range. Mm, that's a job for Phyllis Freddy, not us. <laughs> All we can do is to talk to both sides and try to make them agree a little bit. Yeah, and try not to get ourselves shot while we're doing the talking. And when those folks start battling over that range, they play mighty rough. Well, what do we do first? We'll go talk to Cy Butler. He's the leader of the cattlemen. Then we'll talk to Bert Langdon about the sheep. And somewhere in between, we'll be running for cover and hollering, Don't shoot, please! We're your friends! Dead blame. 
blame it, Wild Bill. Why can't you face facts? The sheep eat the grass right down to the roots, and the next year there's no forage for the cattle. But it's open range, Si. It's government land, and that means anybody can use it. It's grassland, Bill. Perfect range for cattle. And if we let them sheep herders run their flocks on it very long, it'll be ruin for everybody. Now, why don't you get together with the sheep men, Si? Maybe you can work it out so they use one part of the range and you use the other. Well, we're getting together with them, all right. Us common are going to pay them a visit real soon and run their mutton-headed woolies clear down into the desert. You'll never solve anything by starting a war. I want you to give me your word you won't start anything until I have a chance to talk to the sheepmen and try to work something out. Well, we know how honest you are, so you go ahead, and I'll try to keep the cattlemen off the warpath. For a while, at least. That's good enough for me. Shake on it, Si. Here, have a piece of my sandwich. Well, thanks. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I always say folks can be a lot more friendly when they've had a bite to eat. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jingles Jones, I ought to shoot you for that. For what? <laughs> What'd I do now? You gave me a sandwich was made out of lamb. Oh, <laughs> There's Bert Langdon's sheep camp right ahead of us, James. Yeah, there's Bert over there by the tent. Hey, looks like he's got a rifle in his hands. Hey, he's pointing it right at us. Hey, Bert, cut it out. Get down, shoot, please. We're your friends. Sugar pots. They're sugar coated, taste so sweet. Just pour on some milk. Mm, boy, they're neat. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Now sugar pops, you know, are sweet. But cowboys know there's an extra treat. Right out of the box, take a handful out. Pop them into your mouth as you run about. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are tops. Yes, sir, Wranglers, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops are big, ready, sweetened pops of corn that are shot with sugar through and through. Now, Sugar Corn Pops are mighty sweet eaten right out of the box for snacks and right out of the bowl for breakfast. And they never need a bit more sweetening. They're sugared all over better than you could ever do with a spoon. Help yourself to Sugar Corn Pops in the morning and enjoy them as a good-tasting snack, too. And say, Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops are mighty good for you. Just one average size bowl full gives you your full day's need of that important sunshine vitamin, vitamin D. Not to mention the other good vitamins and minerals that you get in Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. So have Mom get you Kellogg's fresh sugar corn pops that have been shot with sugar through and through. <laughs> Wild Bill and Jingles were caught right in the middle as they tried to settle the war between the sheepmen and the cattlemen in Stone Valley. After a fruitless talk with the leader of the cowmen, they rode for a sheep camp and rode right into a storm of rifle bullets. Hold it, Bert! He don't cut that out. I'll take that rifle away from him and hammer his ears down with it. He sees it's us now. He's quit shooting. Yeah, he saw us before. You'd think he could tell who I was anyhow. There ain't too many men around here that look like a prairie schooner when they're sitting in the saddle. Here we are. Well, my child. Ho, Joker, ho. Howdy, Bert. You sure put out a hot welcome for your friend. Yeah, how come you're so fast with that dad blame rifle? I'm beginning to think sheep men don't have no friends. Not half an hour ago, some dry gulcher sat up on that rocky ridge and shot down five of my sheep. Any idea who it was? It must have been one of the cattlemen. Nobody else would do a low trick like that. But, Bill, the cattlemen promised us that they wouldn't try nothing till we talked to Bert. Yeah, that's right. We've got Cy Butler's word that he'd hold off till we had a talk with you. Bill, we all got a lot of respect for you, but you're wasting your time here in Stone Valley. We're going to keep fighting the cowmen till they realize that our sheep got just as much right to the grass as their cattle. I never saw such a bunch of rock-headed jaspers in all my life. They're all as stubborn as Missouri mules. Look, Bert... You sheep men are grazing the upper end of the valley. The cattle men are using the lower end. Why don't you just keep it that way? Yeah, that'd be fair for everybody. Well, your plan's a good one, Bill, but you'll have to find some way to make the two sides pull together before they'll ever agree on it. Then that's what we'll have to try to do. Meantime, Jingles and I are going to make some laws of our own around here. We are? Well, what are we going to do now? 
We're going to set up camp on top of that range of hills that runs across the valley. The first cattleman that comes over into this end, or the first sheepman that goes over the other way, is going to run right smack into us and into trouble. And I'll tell the boys, but I warn you, Bill, that camp you're setting up on the hill is liable to have lead flying over it from both sides. What are you reading now, Jingles? Oh, I'm still working on the adventures of Fearless Freddy. I'm right at the part where Fearless Freddy stopped the stampeding cattle. How does he do that? He roped a big pine stump and stretched his lariat across the trail. And when the 2,000 maddened steers come thundering down the trail, they tripped over the rope and piled up in a heap of ballin' beef. Do you believe that, Bill? It says so in the book, doesn't it? Yeah, but I wonder how much this writer knows about stampeding steers. If you ask me, the closest he's ever been to a steer is a T-bone steak. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. I'm losing my confidence in Fearless Freddy. I'm just losing interest in him. I'm wondering if the cattle and the sheep men are going to stay in their own ends of the valley like I told them to. Well, if they do, they got to go through this notch in the hills and we'll see them for sure. I hope they don't try it. Somebody's liable to get hurt. We should have Fearless Freddy with us. He can shoot the flame off a match at 200 yards with a six-gun. That is good shooting. It sure is. Now, that bunch of rocks up on the side of the hill is about 200 yards, ain't it? Mm Mm-hmm, just about, and it's a long way. Now, you see that little hunk of moss on top of the biggest rock? Yeah, but that's bigger than a match head. Sure. I ain't Fearless Freddy, either. You better allow a little for the wind, Jingles. I am. Pretty close, partner. That's a tough shot. Well, I'll try it once more. Bill! Yeah, there's somebody up there. He jumped behind another rock after you shot. Must have been hiding in there. Come on, let's get him. What was he doing? Spying on us? Probably trying to sneak through the pass without our seeing him. Get down, Jingles. Well, he means business. Yeah, he's got us out in the open. Dust him off. Spoil his aim. He's running for his horse. They can't hit him, and we can't catch him on foot. Let's get Buckshot and Joker and Trailer. I want to know what he's up to. I don't see him, Bill. He's not far out in front of us, and he's heading down to the cattleman's end of the valley. Which side do you suppose he's on? Could be either one. I hear shooting. Yeah. Whoa, Buckshot. Whoa, whoa Joker, whoa. Get around there, Buckshot. Jeff Joker, there's trouble over this way. Bill, I got it all figured out. Either he's one of the sheep men and, and one of the cattle men saw him, or he's one of the cattle men and he's found one of the sheep men, or else he's one... Now, let me see. I got one. Maybe he's an alfalfa farmer and he's out hunting rabbits. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no. Oh, Buckshot. Oh, oh Joker. Oh. Hey, uh, Jingles. That should tell you who the rider was. Three dead steers and they've just been shot. Looks like one of the sheep men came over here to get even. Sure does. Well, I guess Bert was right about there being no way to make peace between these two outfits. I'm afraid the war's just beginning. Look who's riding this way. Where? Uh Uh-oh. Cy and some of his cattlemen. They ain't gonna like this. What'll we do? Try once more and see if we can talk them out of a shooting battle with the sheepmen. I got a hunch that any talking you try to do is just gonna be a waste of breath. Well, Haycock, we did what you told us to, and look what it got us. Three dead steers. You didn't do what you were told, Si. One of your cattlemen went over to the other end of the valley and shot some sheep this morning. That's right. You start throwing lead, you got to expect some to come flying back. What time this morning? Around ten. We got to the sheep camp just after it happened. Well, it wasn't one of my bunch. We were all having a meeting this morning. But we saw the dead sheep. Well, you see the dead cattle here. Uh, maybe they're shooting their own sheep and blaming us. We've had enough, and we're going to run them out for good. Not as long as I can help it. Now turn those horses around and get back home. Nothing doing, Hickok. It's too late for the law to stop it. Hold it. They won't listen, Bill. Then we'll have to make them listen. You know, Wranglers, sometimes when a feller does some real good marksmanship, folks will say he's done sweet shooting. Well, you know, 
There's one kind of shooting that's really sweet shooting, and that's the way Kellogg's sugar corn pops are. <laughs> Shot with sugar through and through. You see, cowpokes, Kellogg's sugar corn pops aren't just pops of golden corn that, oh, that have just been sort of half sugared here and there. Kellogg's sugar corn pops are shot with sugar through and through. Sweet and better than you could ever do with a plain old spoon. Now, Kellogg's sugar corn pops are a treat right out of the bowl for breakfast, and they're grand right out of the box as a snack. And say, remind your mom, Kellogg's sugar corn pops are good for you. One average size bowlful gives you your full day's need of vitamin D. That's the sunshine vitamin plus other important minerals and vitamins. So ask Mom to get Kellogg's sugar corn pops that are... shot with sugar through and through. Kellogg's sugar corn pops. Sugar pops are pops. The angry cattlemen, some more hot-headed than the rest, tried to shoot their way past Wild Bill and Jingles to carry on their feud with the sheepmen. The two lawmen, outnumbered, warned them and then opened fire. Hold it! Hold it, men! Now, two, you got slugs in your arms already. What's the sense of all of us getting shot at? There's enough of us to gun him down! You should talk. Now, you fired the first shot, and then you lost your gun and a hunk of your shoulder when Bill decided to go into action. Si... I'll have you turn your guns over to Jingles. Then we're going to ride over to Bert's camp and get this thing settled once and for all. Yeah. There's not much else we can do, men. Mm. Unless some of you still think you can shoot faster than Bill. Yes, now that's better. Now just hand me that hardware. Thank you. Thanks, Si. I feel like Fearless Freddy, Bill, rounding up a passel of varmints single-handed. Who's Fearless Freddy? We haven't got time for that now. Get on your horses and let's get started. Okay, Bill, now you just ride behind with a gun in each hand and a half a dozen more in my saddlebag. Si, you was asking me about Fearless Freddy. Well, I, I don't really care, Jingles. Well, I'll just read you a bit from the book about him. Fearless Freddy's life was in deadly peril. Three of the evil doers had their guns pointed at his head. Two more stood beside him with sharp knives touching his ribs. Another adjusted a rope around our hero's neck and tossed it over the limb of a sturdy oak tree. Bill, there's one of those dead plain sheep herders right in ahead of us. Where? I see him. Hey, Jingles, that's the rider that we chased over the hill a while ago. Let's get him. Get up there, buckshot. Get on, Joker. Help! Yeah, I'm sure that's the man who shot your steer, Si. Well, let's run him down. We'll ride along with you. And I promise we won't try any tricks. Doggone it, Bill. I dropped my fearless Freddy book. Let it go. We got work to do. Dig in, Buckshot. We're leaving the rest of them. They'll catch up to us. Hold up there. I want to talk to you. Me, I want to talk to you. Don't hit him. Just come close enough so he won't shoot back. He's really running for it now. We're catching up to him, though. Get in there, Buckshot. Hold up that horse, mister. Get away from me. Haul down there. We'll bulldog you right out of that saddle. Let me go. Let me go. I ain't done nothing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, Joker, whoa. What do you want me for? We want to talk to you. But you're making a mighty tough. What was the idea of trailing us all over the valley and shooting up them steers? What steers? I don't know what you're talking about. This one of your men, Si? Man, I'll be doggone. Bart Willoughby. Bart Willoughby? You know him then? Sure I know him. He's a prospector. He's got a mine back in these hills somewhere. Keeps it a secret. He's afraid everybody's after his gold. You snooping cattle men. And them sheep men, too. Always prowling around the hills. But I'm on to you. You'll never find my gold. I'll still be mining in Stone Valley when you and all your stock are dead and gone. I'm beginning to think we've got the answer to some dead sheep and dead steers, son. Yeah, and we've been blaming the sheep herders. Speaking of sheep herders, here comes some of them now, and they're carrying their guns ready. Let's head them off, partner. Hold on to Willoughby, son. All right, Bill. Here comes the rest of them snoopers. All of them. Oh, keep quiet. Hold it right there and put up your gun. Not till we find out what you're doing riding with these cattlemen, Bill. Billy, 
riding with us, Bert. In fact, he just caught the varmint that's been causing all the trouble. He, he did? You mean Bart Willoughby here? That's right. He figured we was all after his little old gold mine. So he was killing sheep and cattle both to keep the war going between us. That's it. Now, why don't all of you folks shake hands and then split up the valley between you and keep it peaceful? Well, uh, what do you say, man? And I'll see that Willoughby goes back to his mine and doesn't bother you anymore. Well, sounds good to me. Shake, Bert. All right, thanks, I. I guess all of us been wasting a lot of time fighting when we could have been raising sheep and cattle. Well, now, that settles. <laughs> Let's ride back and let me find my Fearless Freddy book, Bill. I got to find out what happened to him when he had three guns and two knives pointing at him and a rope around his neck. That's easy, partner. It is? Sure. With one mighty bound, he jumped clear of the sturdy oak tree. And landing in the saddle of his trusty pinnow, he rode into town where he had a big supper and a good night's sleep. Well, now, that sounds like a pretty good ending. Now, Joker, hold still now. Oh, hush up. I ain't going to take no mighty bound. All I want is that big supper and a good night's sleep. I ain't fearless, Freddy. I'm fearless jingles. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Andy, why don't you tell our young friends about our next adventure? I'd be glad to, Guy. Wild Bill and Jingles are involved in a fight against one vicious criminal who casts a long shadow. So long, kids. See you Friday. <laughs> Kids, do you like things that are yours, yours alone? Then enjoy Kellogg's Variety Pack. There's ten, ten personal portions of Kellogg's delicious cereals in Kellogg's Variety Pack. Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Sugar Frosted Flakes, and other favorites. Ten personal portions of flaked, shredded, popped, and ready sweetened cereals. Have fresh personal portion boxes of good Kellogg's cereals. Get Kellogg's Variety Pack. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Herb Vigran, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Vic Rodman. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production, transcribed in Hollywood. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, reminding you to listen again on Friday, same time, same station, for another adventure of... Why?